Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. Hello, thank you for joining me today. You are listening to Deeper, your daily Bible study. And today we begin a new set of lessons. Our lesson title this week is Jesus and the Apostles' View of the Bible. And um, we're going to be looking at how Jesus saw Scripture, its relevance, its importance, uh, how he interpreted it, also um, how the disciples and the apostles were led to do that as they saw what he had done. And of course, we will be looking for lessons for ourselves as we always do. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings to us today. We thank you for the opportunity to study your word. Wherever we are, whatever we might be doing right now, we pray that you would take our minds, focus them on your word, the lessons that your Holy Spirit has for us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to begin this week's set of lessons uh, today, and we'll, we'll pick this up on the last day this week as well, on the concept of present truth. And we'll see that this uh, is very uh, much an aspect of how Jesus and the apostles viewed the Bible. I'm going to start by reading from the book of Second Peter, chapter 1, verse 12. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them and be established in the present truth. So this phrase, present truth, is one that uh, Seventh-day Adventists um, have historically used to apply to our understanding of our mission and our message, and that is that we are you know, given the task of preparing the world for the return of Jesus Christ, and because it is a timely message, it is one uh, of present truth. Now, you know, what does present truth mean? Well, we can look throughout the Bible. A number of stories illustrate for us um, times of special present truth. Uh, for example, Noah. God told Noah, you know, 120 years, and the world's going to be destroyed by a flood. Noah, here is your message, and here is your mission. Build the ark, warn the world. Um, and certainly that was a present truth message. You know, there was... Uh, this this call that people needed to make a decision on, this is part of present truth, where there's action necessary. And there's also a window of time in which this message is uh, particularly uh, pertinent. Another example would be uh, the Passover, the first Passover, the exodus from Egypt. Um, Egypt had been through nine plagues, and now it is coming the tenth and final plague. And there is a present truth message, isn't there? And that is that a lamb must be slain, its blood must be smeared on the doorpost of the house, and you must be inside of that house in order for the firstborn uh, to survive that night. That is a present truth message. We can see other examples. The return from Babylon after the 70 years of captivity. That was uh, There was a window of time here in which uh, the Jews were to return, and that was at the end of the prophetic period. But before the uh, persecutions uh, would come upon them again, you remember the story of Esther and Haman and his efforts to destroy all of the Jews uh, within the Persian Empire. Uh, you know, if the Jews had all gone back to Jerusalem as they could have, as they were free to do at the end of the 70 years, well, they wouldn't have faced at least that level of persecution. Uh, if they had been in Jerusalem there. So we can see many examples of, of present truth throughout the Bible. And we're going to be looking today at Jesus and his view of present truth. How did that apply in his time? Let's look at a few verses here at statements that Jesus made. The first one is in Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, 
and believe the gospel. So Jesus begins his ministry with a reference to prophecy, to time prophecy, to fulfilled prophecy, or at least prophecy that is in the process of fulfillment. Notice also that there is a call to action as well. The call to action is to repent and believe the gospel. You know, John the Baptist had been, had been preaching the same thing, hadn't he? Uh, he had said you know, his was a message of repentance. He was calling people to baptism, to preparation for the first advent of the Messiah. Again, these are all aspects of present truth. Uh, frequently, not always, there is a, uh, a reference to prophecy being fulfilled. Uh, very often, those are time prophecies. Again, look at Noah, the time prophecy of 120 years. Look at the Exodus from Egypt, the time prophecy given to Abraham of 400 years in Egypt. Uh, look at the return from Babylon, time prophecy being finished of 70 years. And Jesus as well here in Mark chapter 1, verse 15, when he says the time is fulfilled, well, this is the end of the uh, 483 years or the, the 69 weeks there in Daniel 9 leading up to the appearance of the Messiah. And there's only, you know, a few years left, seven more years until the completion of that 70 weeks or 490 years. And so Jesus begins his ministry with a uh, message about fulfilled time prophecy. And then what should you do about it as a result? What is the call to action? Again, repent, believe the gospel. Let's look at another example, this one from the uh, Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verses 17 through 21. Luke, chapter 4, Jesus says in verse 17, or we're reading about him, There was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And then verse 20 says this, He closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened upon him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And really, this is the crux of the idea of present truth or the concept of present truth is that Scripture is being fulfilled presently, currently, right now. And that means that if we want to be part of what Scripture is prophesying, predicting, if we want to take part in these promises, if we want to avoid the the punishments that may be coming, uh, whatever Scripture is referring to, we must take action now. Now, in Luke chapter 4, you know, what was the action that Jesus wanted the people to participate in? Well, it was to believe in him, right? As the Messiah that was uh, to come, had been predicted to come, as the one that could heal them of their blindness and their deafness and their sickness and their hardness of heart, if they would just put their faith in him. So here is the call to action in Luke 4. Put your faith in me, Jesus is saying, as your Savior, as the Messiah. We can look at a few more examples from things that Jesus says, uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verse number 18, Jesus says this, I'll back up to verse 17, if you know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. I speak not of you all, I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled, he that eateth bread with me hath lift up his heel against me. Jesus is here in the Last Supper, and he's speaking to his disciples, uh, and of course referring here to Judas, the one who would betray him in just a couple of hours after this. You know, Jesus was very much aware that Scripture was being fulfilled at this point in his life. Uh, Many other similar uh, verses and references that we could look at uh, throughout his ministry that Jesus makes, you know, later that evening. Uh, Jesus says this, John 17, verse 12, again in reference to Judas. He's praying now, and he says, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Again, we, we see so clearly here in the life of Jesus, in his words, 
in his prayers, in his warnings to the disciples, this awareness that the word of Scripture is being fulfilled right then, right there. You know, are we aware of this today? As, as we talk about the importance of present truth, we need to have the awareness that prophecy is being fulfilled right now in our day. As I'm recording this, uh, we're in the middle of the, the coronavirus crisis worldwide. And um, my state here in Missouri, like many places in the world, has been essentially locked down with a stay-at-home order as uh, the world tries to deal with this virus. This is a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. I believe this very much. You know, Jesus was very clear that there would be disease and pestilence uh, in the world before he comes back. And yes, there have been horrible diseases before, and, and there probably will be others, but certainly this is a fulfillment of that prophecy, and it should wake us up to the fact that Jesus is coming back soon. Well, what are we going to do about that? You know, there's a call to action there. Um, how am I living my life? How is my relationship with Jesus? These are all issues connected with present truth. In John chapter 19, verse 28, we see that Jesus even did things specifically or said things so that prophecy would be fulfilled. Uh, John nineteen twenty eight says this, he's hanging on the cross. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. What are you doing in your life right now, uh, friend, that is uh, consciously, that you are consciously doing in an effort that scripture might be fulfilled? You know, and I'm talking about, all, you know, there's all sorts of promises, promises of victory, promises of overcoming sin, promises of restored relationships. You know, what are you allowing this crisis? And I'm talking now about this coronavirus crisis that the world is dealing with. If you're listening to this later in a few months, uh, there will be another crisis that the world is going through. What are you doing right now that will allow the words of the Bible to be fulfilled in your life? This is present truth. This is how we need to see the Bible as present truth. It's his message to us today. And there's always a call to action. You know, I remember as a college student, I was uh, working on a construction crew. We were framing up the roof on top of a third story apartment building. This took place in Lincoln, Nebraska, which has a lot of strong wind. It was a beautiful, clear, sunny day. And uh, you can see the Capitol building from most parts of the city, a big, tall building. And um, at one point, I looked up and I noticed that all of a sudden the Capitol building had disappeared. Why? I didn't know. I didn't think about it. Well, about 30 seconds later, a 70-mile-an-hour gust of wind out of nowhere uh, slammed against the building. It had come ripping through the city. And um, not, nobody was hurt. Nobody fell off. But we were taken off guard. You know, there was a present truth that we should have been aware of at that point. You know, when the Capitol building disappears on a clear day, there's probably a dust cloud coming with a big gust of wind. You need to get down. You need to protect yourself. Uh, you need to take a place of hiding. You need to do whatever it is that needs to be done now. And friends, this is the whole concept behind present truth, is that there is a call to action uh, that applies specifically to us today. And um, we need to open our eyes, open our hearts, open our minds to what it is that, that Scripture says, to what the Holy Spirit is trying to do in our lives. And friends, as we pray and we ask for God's guidance in understanding present truth, He will do that. He will lead us into this deeper relationship with Him where our faith is built and we are willing to follow wherever Jesus might be leading. Well, we are out of time, friends. Uh, I've been blessed by the time spent in his word. I hope you have as well. And I look forward to studying with you again tomorrow. Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788.